The next day, Zebra joined Toriko and Komatsu's group to explore the desert cactus garden for new ingredients. However, there was a catch, Zebra kept eyeing Komatsu, making him constantly fearful. According to Toriko, anything that caught Zebra's interest would be relentlessly pursued and devoured until extinction. With nothing else to do, Zebra and Toriko decided to fight each other to pass the time. Even the beautiful house they were in got damaged during their brawl. After exchanging techniques, they felt hungry and instructed Komatsu to go to the kitchen and prepare some dishes for them, warning him that they might just eat him if he didn't comply. However the only remaining piece of meat in the fridge led to another brawl between the two, both eager to claim the last piece of food. Truly they were both gluttons. Komatsu fed up decided not to say anything and pretended not to notice. After a while, the group arrived at the desert garden, which turned out to be a small town. While walking, Zebra spotted a stranger and immediately asked if there were any delicious dishes available, displaying his uncouth manners. Komatsu couldn't help but doubt if this was one of the four heavenly kings. On their way they stopped at a shaved ice shop, ordering two cups of sand ice made from a type of rock that didn't melt even in extreme heat, and was a hundred times colder than regular ice. The refreshing sensation lingered in their throats for a long time. The owner also helped them prepare sunblock and other necessary tools for venturing into the desert to search for cooking ingredients. As they ventured deeper into the desert, the group found a village. Upon Zebra's appearance, the villagers warmly welcomed him. It turned out that many years ago, there was a civil war in this place, and Zebra was released as a war machine to eradicate all enemies, ensuring peace for the residents. At that moment a giant creature emerged from beneath the sand, a level 23 eight-tailed scorpion beetle. A single drop of its venomous tail could kill any living creature. The beast swiftly attacked a girl in the village, but Zebra's punch cut it into three pieces, saving the day. In reality Zebra's personality wasn't bad at all. Despite his gluttony and a bit of a hot temper, he always helped those weaker than him which was why the villagers valued him. After spending some time with the villagers, they generously gave the three of them two specially equipped camels to ease their travel in the desert. These camels could store a significant amount of water in their humps, allowing the group to access water whenever needed by simply turning a valve. Their destination required them to cross the hauntingly beautiful desert maze, also known as the Graveyard of Gourmet Hunters. The group continued their journey through the desert, where the daytime temperature could reach up to 60 degrees. Without the camels it would have been extremely challenging to traverse. While Zebra was gnawing on a chicken leg, he suddenly stopped sensing something approaching. It turned out to be desert sand sharks. With just a shout from Zebra, they quickly retreated burrowing into the sand to hide. Toriko revealed that Zebra could release ultrasonic waves that humans couldn't hear. He always knew how to find sounds that would terrify his enemies using them to launch attacks. After a day and night of traveling, the group finally reached the desert maze where the sand beneath was scorched red by the blazing sun, emitting heat far more intense than a regular desert. Suddenly, something frightened the camels and amidst the calm. Komatsu went missing. When the group regained their composure they discovered a massive creature emerging from the sand. Zebra began inhaling air into his stomach and released ultrasonic waves in all directions, quickly pinpointing Komatsu's location. Meanwhile, the desert beast formidable as it was couldn't stand up to Toriko's powerful punches. It seems that Komatsu has fallen into a deep cave deep beneath the ground. Meanwhile Zebra and Toriko have entered the heart of the desert maze. Despite their seemingly simple steps, a single misstep could lead them to fall into endless pits. A gigantic sand whale sensing the hunger of the two heavenly kings, offered itself to be captured. Touched by this gesture Toriko prepared a sashimi dish from the sand whale, showcasing not only its kindness but also its delicious meat. Zebra's stamina surpassed Toriko's and he didn't need to adapt to the desert, the desert had to adapt to him. After crossing the desert maze, Toriko and Zebra witnessed a colossal pyramid, its size hundreds of times larger than the largest pyramid in Egypt. However Zebra mentioned that this was just a small part of the gourmet pyramid. Beneath the sand, an even more enormous architectural structure was hidden. Komatsu found himself on a lower level of the pyramid. Upon waking up he started exploring to find an exit. Unfortunately he encountered a gigantic creature, but it sensed Zebra's presence and fled without daring to turn back. Zebra then warned Komatsu to remember to cook for him when they meet again, or else he might end up becoming his meal, a contradiction between Zebra's good intentions and his fierce appetite. After ensuring Komatsu's temporary safety, Zebra and Toriko continued to advance into the depths of the gourmet pyramid. Suddenly a monster blocked their path, unaware that they were facing two gourmet hunters. Encountering an unexpected delicious meal, the two of them enjoyed a satisfying feast. Shortly after, they entered the maze of the pyramid where the surroundings changed positions periodically. Toriko noticed that Zebra was showing signs of fatigue, he had used his sound waves excessively. Utilizing this technique required an immense amount of energy, in the order of millions of units. 
Facing a three-headed wolf at level 60, Toriko took the initiative to engage, allowing Zebra to recover his strength. However when Toriko was about to be attacked, Zebra disregarding the danger stepped in and took the blow. He quickly focused his strength on his hand, delivering a punch that sent the three-headed wolf flying into the wall. However this victory came at the cost of completely depleting Zebra's energy, temporarily rendering him unable to speak. Meanwhile below the gourmet pyramid, Kamatsu discovered a very familiar footprint, belonging to the mysterious creature that had appeared in the vegetable sky garden. Back above the two heavenly kings had devoured the three-headed wolf, but Zebra's energy was still insufficient for a full recovery barely reaching 2%. In terms of calorie storage capacity? Zebra's body was supposed to be 1.5 times stronger than Toriko's. However at this moment, Zebra couldn't open his mouth, unable to speak and had to resort to signaling with his hands a somewhat melancholic situation. Zebra can quickly recover but now he can't speak, so he communicates with Toriko using sign language. He instructs Toriko to continue forward and Zebra pounds on the wall, signaling Toriko to break it. With a single punch Toriko shatters the rock revealing a secret staircase. Below Kamatsu faces a monstrous snail rushing to attack him. Fortunately Zebra protects him with a sound armor, causing Zebra to lose his hearing temporarily. Since everything can be potential ingredients, Kamatsu takes out a kitchen knife from his luggage and slices through the rock layers he is standing on. Above Zebra and Toriko confront a group of monsters and Toriko uses his flying fork technique to subdue them. Kamatsu luckily falls into a water pool in an underground leakage channel leading to the pyramid. Using a device to check the correct direction Kamatsu's device detects a monster. Curious Kamatsu ventures into the direction indicated by the device, but he is chased by a monster causing him to lose his pants. While escaping from the pursuing monster, Kamatsu inadvertently reaches a hidden location with numerous coffins. There are many strange paintings on the walls and a distant glowing object turns out to be a book. Kamatsu approaches to examine it but is unexpectedly attacked by a monster from behind. After consuming the energy Toriko's recovery reaches 60% but Zebra's recovery is only about 7%. The journey continues with multiple paths, a fanged tiger awaits below and its meat appears to be delicious. On the other side, Kamatsu is continuously attacked by the mummy-like monster. Fortunately, thanks to Zebra's sound armor he remains unharmed. However the mummy-like monster turns its attention to another one-eyed monster, allowing Kamatsu to seize the opportunity to retrieve the mysterious book. Toriko and Zebra continue their journey after replenishing a significant amount of calories. Now they proceed to clear out the monsters in front of them and resume their eating expedition. They devour any creature they encounter on the way, leaving only dry skeletons behind. After eating to their satisfaction Zebra regains his voice. Both of them fully recover their strength after consuming all the monsters they encounter on the journey. Zebra takes a deep breath and uses sound waves to locate Kamatsu. Meanwhile Kamatsu inadvertently encounters the strongest creature in the gourmet pyramid, a fire dragon sphinx at level 92. Although Zebra informs the sphinx that Kamatsu is his disciple the monster shows no fear. Zebra immediately activates the bazooka sound to destroy the floor, revealing Kamatsu's location on the lower level. Feeling the formidable strength of the monster ahead Toriko notices a strange scent and recognizes it as Kola. After a roar the Sphinx blows Toriko and Kamatsu away. Zebra confidently stands his ground, ready to face the monster alone. First he uses sound bullets, followed by taking a deep breath and utilizing the voice cutter technique. When the Sphinx loses its vigilance, Zebra delivers the finishing blow with thunder voice. However despite the consecutive attacks, the Sphinx stands defiant and retaliates with its tongue against Zebra. Toriko joins the battle and informs Zebra that he smelled cola emanating from the Sphinx. Recalling a conversation with Melk the First, Toriko shares information that Melo Cola is located inside the Gourmet Pyramid, and the owner is the Fire Dragon Sphinx. Melo Cola will ripen inside the Sphinx's body because the scent of cola is spreading throughout its body. The Sphinx raises its leg, gently waving it causing the ground to tremble. Zebra laughs wickedly finding the outside world fascinating. Both of them release their aura, summoning two demons to prepare for the battle. Kamatsu examines the book he found, although it consists of ancient characters, he can still identify it as a recipe book. Both attack the Sphinx directly but it remains unfazed, effortlessly dispelling their auras with a simple leg wave. Toriko jumps using his flying fork technique, but the Sphinx catches it in its mouth and throws it elsewhere. Zebra using a barrage of sound bullets, can't penetrate its thick skin. Toriko attempts a foot-swinging knife attack, but the Sphinx easily dodges. Zebra then employs a sound slash, causing some of the Sphinx's hair to fall. The book Kamatsu holds mentions the tears of the Sphinx as the Melokola, and it also provides instructions on how to process special ingredients. Toriko reminisces about their journey, unintentionally discovering the correct way to defeat and enjoy the creatures they encountered on the way. Though Kamatsu cannot read all the crazy symbols relying on the images, he guesses their meaning, drawing on his experience reading hundreds of different cookbooks over the years. Toriko praises Kamatsu, and he appears delighted. 
Zebra acknowledges Komatsu's talent in finding unique ingredients and both decide to trust Komatsu. Following the instructions in the book he found. As they prepare to confront a strange creature passing through places Toriko and Zebra have visited, the creature looks up at the commotion. On one side Zebra and Toriko charge together, but the Sphinx continuously uses its hair to attack them, making Komatsu nervously watch. After receiving Zebra's encouragement, Komatsu imagines intensely the moment when he will butcher the Sphinx following the book's instructions. The first step is to gently knead its entire body, similar to tenderizing meat with a meat hammer, using just the right force. While the Sphinx continues attacking Toriko and Zebra relentlessly, Zebra instructs everyone to cover their ears and then uses the bazooka voice skill. The scream resonates affecting the Sphinx, and Zebra's attack softens it as per Komatsu's imaginative vision. Next is the chest area, where Toriko will strike the upper palate with a force that's just right. Due to Zebra's recent skill usage, he now has only half of his energy. Following Komatsu's guidance, Toriko will attack while Zebra provides support from behind. Zebra creates a shield of sound to counter the Sphinx's hair, allowing Toriko to approach easily and deliver a tenfold spiked punch to the upper palate. The Sphinx falls and Toriko's attack consumes 300,000 calories. Angry and revived the Sphinx retaliates by scratching Toriko and Zebra with its legs. Komatsu continues to imagine cooking methods with Toriko and Zebra as utensils. Next they have to scrape off some scales from its back. Zebra attracts the Sphinx's attention and Toriko jumps up, using his leg knife technique which consumes over 500,000 calories. Though the scales fly off lightly. The task to obtain the cola doesn't end there. Both must continue to stimulate its instep. Zebra shoots sound bullets into its instep and quickly changes positions. Then he plucks a feather from each wing simultaneously. Both jump up and synchronize a 1-2-3 rhythm, easily pulling apart the two feathers. That action caused the tear ducts of the Sphinx to swell up. Following this trend if stimulated according to the principles outlined in the book, before releasing CO2 gas it would dissolve into its tears, turning into carbonic acid and ultimately into mellow cola. Komatsu enlightened by the supreme being, saw the completed dish after the massage, feather plucking and now Zebra and Toriko had to gently massage the flesh on the Sphinx's shoulders from the inside. Both immediately used their techniques to massage the Sphinx. When Komatsu noticed them struggling with the Sphinx's mane, he remembered that cutting off the mane would be fine. Zebra somewhat annoyed said, why didn't you say that earlier? They continued persistently exchanging blows with the Sphinx, battling for nearly half a day. They fought until both were exhausted, but the Sphinx showed no signs of relenting. In the final step both had to strike with all their might, using 100% of their remaining strength to attack its serpent tail. Zebra and Toriko combined their flying fork and sound bullets on the Sphinx's tail. This attack was as powerful as a nuclear bomb, and finally the Sphinx couldn't endure the pain inflicted by both, shedding tears in two streams, and its tears were the mellow cola. However at that moment, Komatsu was unexpectedly attacked from behind by the bird-headed monster, causing him severe injuries. The incident happened so quickly that Toriko and Zebra couldn't react in time. Then the bird-headed monster rapidly transformed, delivering a powerful punch to each of them at lightning speed. With a single breath, it quickly sucked up all the mellow cola that everyone had worked so hard to collect. This left Zebra and Toriko extremely frustrated. It turned out that the monster chose death, and only they had been the ones to plunder food from others until now. This monster was cunning beyond expectations. Toriko immediately rushed to attack the bird-headed monster. The collision of two powerful punches caused both of them to be thrown far away. Seizing the opportunity, Zebra jumped in to unleash his sound bazooka technique on the creature. However it still wasn't enough to defeat the powerful monster. In desperation, the two had to cooperate to have a chance at overcoming this ancient creature. Zebra used his super sound bazooka technique to amplify Toriko's speed several times. Then Toriko threw a supersonic punch at the creature, sending it flying and causing severe internal organ damage. Zebra quickly drained the creature's life force, leaving it shriveled up like a dried corpse. The truth was this monster had endured hunger for thousands of years inside the Gourmet Pyramid, and it took both Gourmet Kings to defeat it. Suddenly a noise came from behind, surprisingly Komatsu was still alive after taking a hit from the creature. It turned out that Zebra had silently created a sound a more covering Komatsu's entire body to protect him. Despite his rough exterior, Zebra cared deeply for his friends. Meanwhile the Sphinx still lay there, crying and mellow cola flowed in all directions. When everyone tasted it, they discovered an irresistibly pure and sweet flavor that surpassed even the finest premium wines. It filled Toriko's cells with energy and vitality, truly living up to its reputation as the world's most delicious cola. After obtaining mellow cola, Zebra suggested that Komatsu become his personal chef. If judged solely by strength, even Toriko was slightly inferior to Zebra. If Komatsu agreed to be his assistant, they would form a powerful gourmet hunting duo like never before. 
However Komatsu declined Zebra's offer because he trusted Toriko, and believed that one day Toriko would create the world's finest menu. To collect Melo Cola, Komatsu used a gourmet liquid storage device. He pressed the start button, and it sucked all the liquid inside. After the Sphinx finished crying, it became extremely angry and chased Toriko and the others away. Back in the desert village, Toriko thanked the villagers by giving them some ingredients and Melo Cola for providing the two camels. As the journey concluded, Komatsu also made a significant harvest by obtaining the ancient cookbook inside the gourmet pyramid. This book was part of the culinary heritage passed down by ancient people. Guiding new discoveries in the gourmet era. The next day, Komatsu invited Toriko and Zebra to his restaurant for a meal. While waiting, the two gourmet kings feeling restless, engaged in a martial arts exchange. Soon, a fully prepared table of food emerged. Toriko and Zebra started with a refreshing glass of cold cola before focusing on the main course. In just five short minutes they had cleaned the entire table, living up to their reputation as gluttonous gourmets. News arrived that the IGO organization sought the corpse of the defeated monster for research. Representatives from the Zero TH biotope, a secluded area within the gourmet world, were sent to collect it. These warriors possessed terrifying strength and were recruited by the gourmet Yakuza boss. Even the master knife sharpener Milk I and the resurrection artist Yusaku were members of the Zero TH biotope. Mansam the director revealed that the creature Toriko's group encountered above the vegetable sky and beneath the gourmet pyramid was called a nitro. It is said that nitros have existed on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. One of their remarkable abilities is their incredibly robust vitality. When the environment deteriorates, nitros can enter a state of dormancy automatically. In extreme cases, they can continue to hibernate for thousands of years without needing food and water. Yesterday, the IGO organization received news that another nitro was still inside the gourmet pyramid. Currently no one knows its whereabouts. Since ancient times, nitros have had an instinct to seek delicious ingredients. There are even rumors that these creatures are the key to approaching the legendary gourmet god ingredients. When the gourmet eclipse occurs the time when god ingredients appear. A battle for gourmet supremacy is inevitable. The next day, Toriko and Komatsu were sponsored for a vacation at a beach resort. The main sponsor was the young billionaire owner of the colossal dinosaur, Chris. The young billionaire did this to express gratitude for Toriko and Komatsu helping Chris successfully evolve. The high-speed train quickly took Toriko and Komatsu to a crowded beach, a culinary paradise known for its affordable and exquisite dishes. At the beach they encountered some familiar faces, including Setsuno, the alcohol-ridden old man or the knocking master Jiro, and Rin, who were also on vacation. Every year Rin came here to enjoy seaside cuisine. Toriko began to try famous dishes. Such as the musical watermelon that played music when eaten and the squid ramen with a built-in bowl, making it a hot and fresh seafood ramen. Toriko also visited a friend's curry rice shop at the beach, but to his surprise the place was closed. This friend was Cumin and he explained that two days ago, his younger sister Safra, went to the sea to find curry ingredients. However two days had passed and she hadn't returned, causing Cumin great concern. Cumin revealed that their family's traditional curry sauce originated from a curry meteorite that only appears on Earth every 99 years. Its flavor intensifies over the years during its cosmic journey. Cumin's father collected the curry ingredients from the meteorite when it fell to Earth. From those ingredients, he researched and created an incredibly delicious curry sauce. Cumin pleaded with Toriko to help find his sister, and Toriko agreed. The group quickly located Safra in a sea area about 10 nautical miles from the mainland. However, Safra was still searching for ingredients to make curry sauce, so she couldn't return with everyone yet. Most of the ingredients were rare and couldn't be bought in the market. So she had to go to the sea to hunt for them. At this point, she was only missing one ingredient, the water tiger, a fierce wild beast living on Horse King Island. Toriko decided to go to Horse King Island to help Safra find the water tiger. For some reason and somehow, Zong's group was also on this island. Suddenly, a roar echoed in the forest, and a gigantic water tiger appeared before everyone. With a level of 70, it was considered a formidable opponent. Indeed, Toriko's knife skills were easily nullified by the water tiger. He swiftly punched it in the mouth, but as the tiger's body was made of water, physical attacks were ineffective. After observing for a while, Toriko discovered the weakness of the tiger and lured it to another location. Once out of the shaded forest, the tiger's strength rapidly diminished. The water in its body began to evaporate. It was at this moment that Toriko rushed in, delivering a powerful punch to finish off the level 70 water tiger. Finally, everyone successfully gathered all the ingredients to bring back home for Cumin to cook a truly delicious curry pot. 
The smooth and fragrant sauce emitted an enticing aroma, and pouring this sauce onto the plate of curry immediately illuminated it, as they tasted a piece with the rich and sweet flavor of water tiger meat melting inside their mouths. Seeing the delicious food, the gluttonous zebra immediately appeared, asking what his brothers were eating that was so delicious and wanting some for himself. The next day, Toriko and Komatsu headed to a mysterious forest to gather ingredients as IGO's boss had requested Toriko to collect. Toriko suddenly stopped as there were strange footprints in front of him. A glowing creature in the grass turned out to be a rabbit, but behind it was a giant ox chicken. Toriko used a fork to create a barrier, dodged the attack, and then gathered strength to deliver a powerful punch, sending the unfortunate ox chicken flying straight into the sky. Earlier, Toriko had consumed a ton of mellow cola, which helped his gourmet cells develop, but Toriko was not satisfied with himself because there would always be higher mountains. Coco and Sani were also diligently training according to the boss's list. Sani headed to the Wack Trail, the path connecting the gourmet world and the human world, where he encountered a member of Biotope Zero, who was detaining a person. And that person was Giman, the gourmet gang leader. In a dark and impoverished city, accompanied by strong waves, Coco felt like everything there was an illusion, life having its ups and downs. At Bishikokai's castle, Su Chef Alfaro and his servant Jojo went to the place where the newest model robots were stored, preparing for the upcoming battle to seize God. The next day, Toriko invited Komatsu to a special place in the forest, revealing that there was an incredibly delicious restaurant inside. Due to some undisclosed reasons, very few people knew about this restaurant. It was a house situated in the middle of a blackwater lake, named Barmaria. At this moment, with no customers inside, the owner immediately came out to greet the two and inquire about what they wanted to eat. A unique aspect was that the owner of this restaurant was not a human but a robot. As soon as the food was brought out, Toriko's mouth watered profusely. Despite being a simple fast food dish like a hamburger with meat and french fries, its flavor was incredibly delicious. The owner also recommended two specialties here, rat potatoes and black rice with jewelry meat, which were truly exquisite. These were the best-selling dishes and favorites of the restaurant. Suddenly, Toriko noticed that someone had been sitting behind him since earlier, and he hadn't noticed. Komatsu immediately recognized him as the mysterious person who had controlled the robot and once tried to steal his knife. His intention was to obtain God, an ingredient that could control the entire world. The intense clash of auras between him and Toriko immediately created waves in the lake. The man's real name was Star Jun, one of the strongest chefs in the Bishikokai organization. Temporarily avoiding direct conflict with Toriko. Star Jun left the restaurant. If the two were to truly confront each other, Toriko wasn't certain of the outcome. A few days later, with some free time on their hands, Toriko once again invited Komatsu on a pilgrimage to a temple to seek good fortune. The place they visited was the world's largest gourmet temple, covering an area of over 80,000 square kilometers and welcoming around 9 billion visitors annually for food purification rituals. As usual, wherever Toriko went, the relentless food reporter Tina and the enthusiastic Zong were not far behind. Although it was referred to as a pilgrimage, Toriko's true purpose in coming here was to savor the delicious dishes the place had to offer. He enjoyed a bowl of seafood stir-fried noodles, explored various snack vendors, and indulged in a food tour. Relishing the affordable and tasty treats. After eating, both of them participated in the food purification ritual using pure spring water within the temple, leaving them with a comfortable and pleasant feeling throughout their bodies. Later, Toriko hired a sheep taxi service to explore the scenic surroundings of the temple. The staff reminded them to fasten their seatbelts and wear helmets because the sheep could run very fast, reaching speeds of up to 150 km per hour. Next, they toured the snow pine forest inside the gourmet temple, where gigantic trees soared to heights of over a thousand meters. Upon exiting the forest, they reached the magnificent shrine dedicated to Acacia, the gourmet hunter. The greatest in history, who discovered the god ingredient and used it to end a bloody war, restoring peace to the world. Outside, a knife-pulling competition was taking place, with many attempting their luck, but no one had succeeded so far. Zong, the big brother, stepped in to showcase his strength, but despite his efforts, the knife remained firmly in place, embarrassing his younger siblings. Encouraged by Toriko, Komatsu decided to give it a try. To everyone's surprise, with just a gentle force, the knife was pulled out effortlessly from the wooden surface. Finally, Komatsu earned the title of the luckiest person and received the blessings of the gourmet temple. The food tour concluded, and the two of them rode the sheep taxi back home. The next morning, Komatsu, accompanied by a penguin, arrived at Toriko's house. The two bosses of the house welcomed them, but before they could knock, Toriko opened the door, startling both of them to the point of almost wetting themselves. Toriko explained that he used this method to scare them as a preparation for hunting a specific ingredient they were going to find. The miraculous fruit in question is the apple that Toriko and Komatsu, along with the fortunate IGO employee, will set out to find today.
This surprise apple originates from a local variety on an island known for endless battles, aptly named the Battle Island. IGO brought seeds from that island back several years ago, intending to cultivate them naturally. It is a special ingredient, and the more unexpectedly it develops, the more delicious it becomes, adding to the intriguing nature of this surprise apple. In an instant, the group arrives at the Surprise Island, the only island exclusively dedicated to cultivating these special apples. To enhance the flavor of the Surprise Apples, they are strategically exploding bombs in the orchard in a clockwise direction. Stepping onto the island, the sound of gunfire echoes, making Komatsu quite uncomfortable. Every year around this season, 10,000 people from all over the world gather here for the festival of threatening the Surprise Apples. The festival adds a lively atmosphere to the island, and no festivity is complete without the King of Jesters, the antagonist of Sorrow, Song. Here are the members of the G7, renowned food tasters from Apollo, and Tepe has also joined. Rin, anticipating her crush Toriko's arrival, has been waiting here since yesterday. Of course, Tina doesn't miss the chance to record a video and upload it to YouTube. The official surprise Apple Festival begins. These young people seem like the Mafia, always using guns for scaring. Toriko takes out a stone he obtained from Milk the First, takes a deep breath, and shouts, shaking the entire island. The apple immediately widens its eyes in fear. The esteemed food critic rates this as the highest astonishment level 27 for apples today. Kamatsu asks Tepe about the astonishment level, and Tepe, in his usual manner, speaks endlessly. Apollo succinctly explains that the levels range from 0 to 100, and Toriko is currently at level 27. The young men continue to use guns to scaring the apples. Instead of scaring, Tepe approaches the apples, continuously talking about the hardships of his life. Zong imitates him, making the apple look genuinely terrified. Komatsu cooks for Toriko, and just one bite leaves the plate spotless. After eating, Toriko sings Gangnam style to scaring not only the apples but everyone around. The cute lady is Sarara Mama, the head chef of Snack Bar Sarara, one of the 50 greatest chefs in the world. Instead of scaring, Mama only needs to say a few threatening words to astonish the apples to level 20. Truly, a top chef only needs to speak to make the apples fearful. Rin also tries and achieves a level of 20, matching Mama. On the other hand, Tepe keeps talking endlessly, and his stories are so long that he puts the apple to sleep, only to wake up startled, reaching an astonishment level of 30. Terry's gentle scaring earns him a level of 40, and the cheerful penguin's presence frightens the apple to a level of 25. Toriko with a mighty fist, stops just in front, terrifying it to a level of 50. However due to excessive force, it faints on the spot. Apollo reveals that so far, only three people have scared this apple to a level above 90, President Igo with 92, Jiro with 95, and a mysterious person whose name is unknown. There's an apple that Apollo picks up, astonishing at level 80. Zong unable to scaring it, resorts to using a fart-based technique to scaring, a foul odor even I outside the screen can imagine. He manages to the apple to level 80. Although it's a record-breaking scene for the day, Tina refrains from filming due to its repulsiveness and smell. Toriko and Komatsu enjoy the surprise apple together. Afterwards, Komatsu orders a glass of apple soda and a glass of freshly pressed apple juice to savor the moment. Today Komatsu is in a joyful mood. Upon Toriko's inquiry, he reveals that he bought a lottery ticket and perhaps after the temple visit, luck was on his side winning the 8th prize. Though the amount is not substantial, with 1 million yen it's still a substantial win. A jackpot would likely be over 100 billion yen. Komatsu unfamiliar with holding a million yen, decides to buy a gift for Toriko. Fortunately, Toriko is also looking to purchase a piece of land, and today's trip is to check out that land. However, with only 1 million yen, it seems challenging. The piece of land for sale has a meager area of 3,300 square meters, starting at an initial bid of 10 billion yen. The reason for its high cost is that there's a tiger chicken currently nesting there, and its eggs are exceptionally delicious. However, this species is introverted, so it will only lay eggs in familiar, preferred places, and the place it chooses to lay eggs is that piece of land. The landowner is an old man named Yaki, renowned for being stubborn. Many powerful gourmet investors and extremely wealthy individuals have come to buy, but their offers have all been completely rejected. At Yaki's house, these young men are opening a suitcase containing 50 billion yen but are immediately looked down upon and told to leave. Indeed, people with money have a different perspective. If they met me, they would sell for just 10 billion. In the sky, a chicken tiger is flying over. As the negotiation breaks down, the Mafia wants to capture the chicken tiger. Toriko, feeling indignant, uses his flying fork technique to knock down their weapons because who would disturb a mother chicken tiger about to give birth? Toriko steps into Yaki's house, immediately smelling the aroma of chicken tiger eggs. Without hiding anything, Toriko expresses his desire to buy the piece of land today. 
However, more importantly to Toriko, he wants to taste one of those eggs with a cute, handsome face. Seeing Toriko's sincerity, Yaki happily takes out an egg for him. Komatsu also cheerfully introduces himself to Yaki to prepare chicken tiger egg dishes. The dishes Komatsu makes include soft-boiled eggs, egg milk, pork and eggs with mushroom cream. Watching Toriko enjoy the meal. Yaki is reminded of his wife. In a blink of an eye, the sky darkens, and Yaki talks about his past as a gourmet hunter. He found a chicken tiger chick in a field a long time ago and has nurtured it to this day. Toriko believes that Yaki raised this mother chicken tiger despite the danger because of greed. In life, everyone is greedy, only Komatsu isn't greedy. Yaki's wife passed away when he was still a gourmet hunter. He went hunting extensively to find ingredients to earn money to take care of his sick wife at home, but the situation worsened, and she couldn't recover. When she passed away, her last words were a simple wish for a family meal with him. He pursued money to the extent of forgetting his dearest loved ones. Indeed, sometimes money can bring happiness, but it's not everything in life. Toriko believes that Yaki, in pursuit of money, forgot how to truly enjoy food. Yaki remembers that his wife's favorite dish was chicken tiger eggs, and the piece of land someone wants to buy is where he and his wife shared their meals. People say that while you can. Try to do things, don't let them slip away and only view them as memories afterward. Toriko wonders why, after raising a large chicken tiger, Yaki wants to sell the land, which holds sentimental value. Yaki simply answers that he is nearing death, and he doesn't know when he will pass away, so when he dies, no one will own that piece of land anymore. Yaki asks Toriko how much he brought. Toriko has only a sincere heart, surprise apples, and 1 million yen from Komatsu. Toriko's sincere words resemble those of Yaki's wife. The happiness from those things cannot be bought with money. Even if those others offer 50 billion yen, it's not worthy of the happiness Mr. Yaki desires. After his passing, he hopes Komatsu and Toriko will come to play with the mother chicken tiger and her newly hatched chick. The next day Toriko invited Sunny and Komatsu to have a meal. After finishing the meal, Toriko revealed that he was looking for a new cooking ingredient called Shining Gurumi, also known as Crystal Fish. This fish species resides in the Death Falls, one of the three greatest waterfalls in the world, with an estimated 1,000 trillion liters of water pouring down every second. Despite its colossal flow, Death Falls is so powerful that not even a cannon can penetrate its intense current. Incidentally Sunny introduced his new teammate, a giant snake from the gourmet world named Queen. Although still a juvenile queen's potential size could reach the length of the equator. With the reliable queen as their water taxi, the three immediately set out towards Death Falls to search for the legendary luminous crystal fish. Sunny chose Queen as a pet because of its stunning appearance, while Sunny was indifferent to everything else. Outer beauty was Sunny's top priority. Ten minutes later Queen transported the trio to the Moors Mountain Range. Deep within this mountain range lies one of the world's three great waterfalls Death Falls. It is an extremely dangerous place where even the mightiest creatures dare not enter. Feeling hungry the trio caught some fish to make a grilled fish dish. Toriko held two delicious fish in his hands, and Komatsu suddenly noticed that the water below was exceptionally clear. If the water was clear, it meant there was a lack of nutrients and no living organisms could thrive. It turned out that the location and structure of Death Falls turned it into a natural filtration system, absorbing all the nutrients and producing the crystal fish. Quickly they reached the source of the waterfall, where the pressure was so intense that it could tear everything apart. At this moment, a level 48 mountain dinosaur and a level 49 elephant monkey attempted to cross the falls but failed, falling into the powerful current of Death Falls. The two monstrous beasts were instantly crushed into pieces without a trace left. The swirling currents below created enormous water vortexes, functioning like high-powered washing machines. Even someone as powerful as Toriko would ascend to heaven if they fell into it. Sunny gently landed on the water's surface, using his sensory threads to form a makeshift raft. At this moment, a level 9 shark hippo unexpectedly leaped onto the water's surface, intending to attack everyone. However it quickly became a meal in Queen's belly, as it was devoured moments after opening its mouth wide to capture its supersized prey. Despite just having gulped down an immensely large catch, Insani's Ice Queen looked truly magnificent. To prepare for crossing Death Falls, Komatsu had to wear protective clothing and an air-supplying mask. Toriko and Sunny having conditioned their bodies in harsh environments, did not need any protective gear. As they approached the waterfall the wind became stronger, and countless water jets compressed under tremendous pressure could cut through diamonds. When shot onto the body it caused excruciating pain. Fortunately, Sunny applied tiny sensors on his head to create a shield against wind and water, using a technique called hair shield. As they successfully passed through the water vortex area, Toriko immediately used his knife technique to carve out a path. However the overpowering flow of death falls pressed down on his attack. At this moment Sani suddenly remembered a peculiar encounter during his training. 
He had met a man named Demon the gourmet gang leader who was meditating. Suddenly, someone startled him from behind and he jolted in surprise. Demon's unique training method involved eliminating all distractions in his mind, paying no attention to anything around him. Thus he often appeared absent-minded. A dragon suddenly appeared behind the two, but Demon showed no reaction. Despite the bizarre appearance, he remained unfazed and unresponsive. When the dragon was about to attack, Gimon without looking sense the threat, drew his sword and swiftly cut the dragon into two in the blink of an eye. It happened so fast that Sunny couldn't see anything, and Gimon returned to his nonchalant demeanor. From that point on Sunny began training with Gimon. He tried his best but still couldn't change Gimon's expression. Indeed Gimon was the legendary leader of a notorious gang, and even Sunny using his most powerful technique, the hair punch couldn't land a hit on Gimon not even once. Gimon revealed that he activated the infinity technique. Once in this state human instincts would be heightened to the extreme. Instincts weren't something inherent, they were accumulated through training and experience. To perceive instincts one needed to first learn to cleanse the mind. A clear mind leads to success, while a mind entangled in illusions deeply traps in nightmares. Sunny found this explanation reasonable, and finally he had an epiphany, adopting the world-weary expression of his elder. Suddenly a group of saw shark sharks appeared. Sensing the danger Demon's body instinctively annihilated them without conscious thought. Later that evening Sonny cooked a pot of saw shark sour soup. After eating Demon's expression remained emotionless, truly speechless. Returning to reality, Toriko inspired by Sonny's story began awakening his own instincts. Indeed after activating the infinity technique, Toriko's calm mind and water-like composure reached a new level. With just one punch he penetrated the flow of the deathfall, astonishing Sonny. When did this guy become so powerful? In the end, the group successfully infiltrated the cave inside the waterfall. However the powers of Toriko and Sani were completely depleted. The two were exhausted to the point of immobility. To find food to help Toriko and Sani recover their strength, Komatsu decided to venture alone into the cave. He used milk star dust to create markers, marking the path he took so that he wouldn't get lost and his friends could find him. Upon reaching the end of the cave, Komatsu saw a glowing and radiant lake. The golden glow beneath the water was the shining gurumi fish, also known as crystal fish in legends. Komatsu immediately assembled a specialized fish-catching rod and scooped up a fish from the lake. However when Komatsu touched the fish, its body suddenly turned black, as if, poisoned. The fish vanished from the world, and it seemed that to catch this species, a special method was needed much like the puffer whales. After several failed attempts, Komatsu became convinced that these fish turned black and were inedible. Then Komatsu noticed the liquid beneath the fish tank, not water but a refined fish oil. Inadvertently, Komatsu touched the head of one fish, and he discovered that only after the fish glowed could he catch it without turning into a dead fish. Komatsu managed to obtain two boxes filled with fish and with the group, rode Queen to the top of a high mountain to enjoy the fish and admire the sunset. When the box were opened, a pleasant fragrance immediately wafted out. The fish oil, free of any greasiness, contained essential nutrients beneficial for the heart and brain. The lake was the place that absorbed all the nutrients from the mountain range, and the crystal fish were the crystallization of those nutrients. Looking at the glowing fish, Komatsu suggested making tempura fish. First, he used fish oil instead of regular oil, heated a pan of oil until very hot, then seasoned the fish and coated it in flour. Once the oil was sizzling, he placed the fish into the pan. The fish, fried in refined fish oil, didn't have a fishy taste. After frying, the oil in the pan remained vibrant and the crystal fish oil could be reused multiple times without deterioration. In the end, they had a plate of golden and crispy fried fish, with a crunchy outer layer and tender, juicy meat inside, boasting a rich and flavorful taste. Anyone hungry, comment your address, and I'll send you some to try. Feeling that something was still missing, Komatsu combined the fried fish with milk stardust seasoning, and indeed, with a touch of seasoning, the crispy crystal fish became even more delicious. The fishing trip today was truly worthwhile. Komatsu wanted to invite Zebra next time, but Sunny disagreed because he found Zebra quite irritating, mainly due to his unappealing appearance. One day, Toriko and Komatsu were having a meal when the Milk Second's vampire monkey suddenly came to see them. It turned out that the Milk Second wanted them to find an ingredient for making knives called Fig Crystal, a type of fruit that bears fruit only once every 10 years, with a hard diamond-like outer shell but an extremely sweet inner flesh. Coincidentally that evening the city would organize a culinary competition. The first prize of the competition was a giant fig crystal, so everyone decided to participate. The program's MC was the reporter Tina and there were three judges sitting behind to score the contestants' dishes. The competition quickly started, and unexpectedly the first contestant was Gourmet Emperor Sani. Sani used his sensing threads to sculpt three beautiful statues from fig crystal. His performance earned him 275 points. 
The second contestant was Uncle Zon dressed as a princess. Due to his appearance he was taken away by a security guard. The third contestant was Kamatsu, he blended a fig crystal and mixed it with flour. After Cha-Cha dancing and making the cake simultaneously, he put it in the oven and made a fruit cake. The cake was delicious but for some reason, Kamatsu only scored 195 points. It turned out that one of the judges had been fired for eating a morning cake, so he was upset and marked Kamatsu down. Next was the second disciple and she made fig crystal jelly, a dish to cool off in the summer with added ice. The dish was super delicious and the judges scored her 285 points. Then came Jiru, the old man who with just a bottle of wine and a few figs crystal, created a dancing lion wine and temporarily took the first place with 295 points. Finally it was Toriko's turn, he used a sparkling crystal stone to create a beautiful fireworks display, but Uncle Zong accused him of cheating because he didn't use fig crystal as an ingredient, so he was disqualified. At this moment, Milk's second vampire monkey also wanted to showcase its skills. It climbed onto the giant fig crystal, and unexpectedly started glowing. The color of the melon truly resonated with it. The judges immediately awarded the vampire monkey the maximum score because it chose the fig crystal as its ingredient. In the end, the vampire monkey offered the prize to Melk's second. Indeed, it's Melk's pet. The next day, Toriko invited Kamatsu to search for new cooking ingredients. This time, they were looking for a type of fruit that grows inside the Autumn Mountain Range, with an area of up to 20,000 kilometers long. The place is called the Autumn Mountain Range because the weather only experiences endless autumn. And the cool climate of autumn is very suitable for plant growth. When the fruit ripens, it will have a delicious and juicy taste. This time, Terry the wolf and the baby penguin also joined the two to enjoy delicious food. Seeing some grape clusters on the vine, Kamatsu wanted to reach down and pick them, but unexpectedly discovered that they were level 30 dancing grapes. Toriko warned that in this forest, there are very peculiar creatures, so everyone needs to be careful and vigilant. For example, here is the supersonic mushroom, small but runs very fast and is difficult to catch. Inadvertently, they trespassed into the territory of a level 25 emperor bee, so the entire swarm of bees chased after them, causing everyone to run away without their pants. Surprisingly, Coco was also present inside this forest, so Coco used his poison to drive away the bee swarm and save everyone. After that, Sonny quickly appeared as well. It turned out that the goal of the three heavenly kings was the same, they wanted to find a super juicy fruit called the Suppears. To make the trip more interesting, the whole group organized a small competition to see who would be the first to find the Suppears. Even Kamatsu and the baby penguin participated. Coco's pet, Emperor Crow was both black and large, so he took advantage of the high ground to observe the terrain below. Sunny's baby queen has super sharp heat sensing senses, so no creature can escape its observation range. Although the baby penguin was somewhat useless, it had the advantage of being cute. Terry the wolf on the other hand, marked its territory strongly wherever it went. At this moment two unexpected beasts leaped down from the mountain. They were level 33 sheep pigs. The movement speed of these sheep pigs was extremely fast. One attacked Toriko, while the other captured Kamatsu and the baby penguin to take them to their den. Toriko immediately rode on Terry to chase after them. When he reached the foot of the mountain, he encountered Coco and Sunny who had returned. Coco and Sunny's pets used their bodies as leverage to help Terry and Toriko climb the mountain at the fastest speed. After defeating one sheep pig, Toriko discovered that there were three immature offspring in their den. Coco noticed that the actual body under the wool of the sheep pig was extremely thin and weak. They had been hungry for a long time and needed food to feed their young. At this point, Toriko suddenly smelled a faint fragrance from within the clouds. Following the scent, he climbed to the top of the mountain and saw a giant tree. On the branches of that tree were the suppears, fresh and juicy. Toriko immediately picked one to taste. As soon as he took a bite, the fruit's juice filled his mouth, an irresistible delicious taste. The pure fragrance of the autumn range was mixed with the clouds, explaining why these legendary pears were so juicy. With these pears, the sheep pig family would no longer go hungry. On a gloomy and desolate island, occasionally, the carcasses of bizarre creatures fall from the sky, becoming delicious prey for the beasts below. Above is a secret stronghold of the Gourmet Corp organization, where chefs are preparing food. After cooking, they pour the used ingredients and garbage down below. The white-haired chef is the executive chef named Nicini. He is trying to find a way to enhance the gourmet cell level for each member in the organization. The pink-haired one is the insect controller who once faced Toriko in a battle on Ice Hell Island to compete for the soup of the century. Currently, Gourmet Corp is preparing to execute some plot, and to do this, they need to abduct many chefs as slaves. The top server Earth chefs are powerful, so the organization dare not touch them and can only capture those chefs without the ability to resist. 
Additionally, the organization has successfully researched and developed the latest model of combat-capable robots. Returning to the Gourmet Hotel, Kamatsu was in the kitchen preparing a new cake with the ingredients he collected, longevity sugarcane, pears, and fig crystal. The diners here are all very satisfied with the dish Kamatsu has just prepared. After completing his work, Kamatsu stays in the dressing room and reads a cooking book. In the evening, Kamatsu meets a friend named Otaki, the owner of the Fairy Tale Castle restaurant, ranking 99th. Otaki suggests steps for Kamatsu to help the restaurant grow, which includes asking gourmet hunters to search for famous ingredients to cook new dishes. Otaki says Kamatsu was naive to have a powerful hunter nearby and not know how to take advantage. A professional chef should earn a lot of money through cooking. If you cook well but don't have money, you can't make it in this world. Otaki has ambitions to climb to the top and is not hesitant to use any means to reach that pinnacle. Kamatsu recalls the past when they both studied the craft together, and now Otaki has changed a lot. Indeed with money, everything becomes different even a person's character can change. On the other side, Toriko and Terry have entered the scenic garden with just one jump surpassing the 300m wall. The guards can only pretend not to notice and hope the wall will be upgraded. But not everyone has legendary beasts, and the guards worry too much. Coco has also arrived Sonny couldn't make it and Zebra decided not to come. He wandered off somewhere. The four heavenly kings when they were young, were told by the IGO president that in the gourmet garden number 8, there is a mark of an exquisite treasure unique which is the appetizer in his divine menu. Each gourmet garden will have a total dish with 8 courses. If found they can use all the items in his divine menu. Toriko and Coco enter a cave containing a large box that the group couldn't open when they were young. Moreover, now there's a two-headed chicken with incredible strength guarding this box. Coco will deal with this chicken, and Toriko will be responsible for opening the super gigantic box. Toriko flexes his buttocks and inhales deeply, Toriko's muscles swell. Then he uses the nail punch to punch hard into the box. At Otaki's restaurant, Kamatsu is preparing to enjoy the dishes of his friend when he is surrounded by reporters. One introduces himself as Morita from Kalori magazine and expresses the desire to interview an idol like Kamatsu someday. Kamatsu is treated with cotton candy and beeswax candles by his friend, expensive ingredients. Kamatsu glances at his friend and sees him bribing the reporter. In the gourmet guard Toriko and Koko are still struggling with their tasks. This two-headed chicken continuously attacks Koko. Now Koko uses a complete toxic armor covering his entire body. Koko jumps and slashes with a poisonous sword, causing the chicken to collapse. Toriko is surprised that Koko dealt with it so quickly, however Toriko still can't open the box. Earlier Toriko's old man said that even with rare ingredients from his menu, it's hard to find a skilled chef who can cook them. Toriko thinks back and decides to unleash the twin nail punch. At the restaurant, Otaki and the reporter discuss finding talented chefs. Otaki believes that in this gourmet era, with rare ingredients and media coverage, many customers will come without caring about the taste. Kamatsu has noticed that some reporters came here, just for the money without eating anything, because they already had a scripted scenario in their heads to PR Otaki's restaurant. For Kamatsu all customers deserve respect, as well as those who helped him understand the importance of enjoying food. On the other side Toriko still can't break through the gigantic box. Despite the hard training and overcoming difficulties to stand here today, he is determined not to give up. Toriko uses all his strength, giving 100% power to unleash a powerful blow, finally opening the gigantic box. Powerful electromagnetic waves spread throughout the earth and Kamatsu, Otaki, along with many other famous chefs worldwide notice it. Toriko thought it was a whole feast inside but it turned out to be a tiny bean. Otaki thinks that Kamatsu is advising him out of envy for his achievements. Kamatsu thinks that money has shattered Otaki's personality, then turns and leaves, saying that when combined with Toriko he will reach the top in his own way. Despite the strong words, he cries when remembering the joyful past with his best friend. Otaki inside drinking is contemplating when a Bishakukai robot suddenly appears. At this time, the IGO president is probably sitting on the back of a noble white horse, hoping that the four heavenly kings will train diligently. Toriko and Koko have arrived at his office but the old man is nowhere to be found. The staff here informs them that he is currently interested in something related to the four heavenly kings' training. The next day, Toriko went to a barbershop to freshen up his handsome appearance. He chose this place because the owner used to be a famous chef. While getting a haircut, customers would be treated to free food. Truly a paradise for food warriors the gourmet hunter. After Toriko finished devouring more than a dozen appetizers, the owner told him to lie down for a hair wash. The owner's movements were extremely professional even from the little details, one could see that he used to be a chef with decent culinary skills. Finding it quite interesting Kamatsu also wanted to try, and the owner immediately massaged him in a way as if he were tenderizing meat, before cooking to make it more delicious. 
Next, the owner brought out two plates of cheese-covered beef tartare. The beef was cooked just right not tough, and retained the delicious tenderness and juiciness of the meat. After finishing the meal, the owner used scissors and a comb to cut Toriko's hair, making it the most unique hair salon in the world. Oh dear, with mossy green hair, you've set a new trend. At this point Coco also entered the barber shop to get a haircut, but the owner accidentally cut too much, so Coco's hair didn't look much different from Toriko's. Afterward, Coco and Toriko revealed to Komatsu that they were searching for the menu of Igo President. The menu had hidden a total of eight different ingredients, inside the eight botanical gardens of the IGO organization. Yesterday the two of them found a bean in botanical garden number eight. It was the bean of the million tree, a type of tree that grows in the gourmet world. It has the ability to emit sounds similar to the voices of ingredients. That's why chefs around the world heard its call echoing when Toriko opened the chest. While everyone was talking, somewhere else a group of chefs including Otaki, was being held captive by the Gourmet Corporation. On this side, everyone suddenly received an urgent message from Director Mansam, so the whole group had to quickly board a plane to Honey Prison. The Warden and Director Mansam were waiting for everyone there. As soon as they entered the prison, the Warden flirted with Toriko, making Rin jealous because he dared to flirt with her crush. The story is that a high-ranking member of the Gourmet Organization has just entered the Ice Holiday Forest to find an ingredient called the Sweet Nectar Tree. However, it has been several days and he has not returned, so Mansam and the Warden asked Toriko's group to find him. They heard that the sweet nectar tree can be entirely eaten, from the trunk to the leaves, and it usually grows in winter in places with temperatures lower than minus 100 degrees. After a while Rin detected the missing group's walkie-talkie signals, indicating that they were nearby. At this point the group was suddenly surrounded by a herd of goat-headed frogs, but Sunny appeared and drove the frogs away, revealing that he was also asked to search for the missing people. Toriko about to turn the frog group into a meal, suddenly saw the frogs running away very fast, as if they were afraid of something. In another location Zebra while hunting, encountered a devil bat. He punched it and the bat died instantly. Zebra being ferocious needs to find 100 types of ingredients, and capture 500 wanted criminals to finalize his contract with Juventus. On this side after searching the entire morning, the group finally found the sweet nectar tree and fortunately, the missing individuals were still alive. After eating the fruit they quickly regained their health. Toriko immediately used his knife skills to peel the tree bark, revealing a layer of soft and smooth sponge cake with an incredibly delicious taste. The leaves had a cool and gentle minty flavor. Even the frozen dewdrops tasted as sweet as sugar. The layer of soil below was top quality chocolate. Sunny used his sculpting sensors to turn those ice blocks into a sphere, decorating the sweet nectar tree and turning it into a Christmas tree. Toriko and Coco went to find some rare ingredients in the forest. Although it looked quite large, it was actually quite light and tasted like cotton candy. At this moment, Rin suddenly spotted a wild beast approaching a level 7 swordhorn, which was the reason the frogs were frightened away. Swordhorns are herd animals so when one appears, its entire herd is likely to be nearby. Komatsu was assigned the task of preparing the ingredients, while the others would confront the herd of swordhorns. These creatures were quite powerful but luckily, the group successfully delayed them, waiting until Komatsu completed the final decoration for the Christmas tree. The five-pointed star made of glowing stones quickly emitted the radiant light, making the swordhorn herd less fierce and much more gentle. At this point the missing old man that the group rescued informed everyone that Director Mansam still had a very important task for them. Mansam wanted them to transform into Santa Claus and distribute gifts to underprivileged children worldwide on Christmas Day, and he had already prepared a sufficient amount of gifts. Initially Mansam also intended to call Zebra, but he was busy with something else and couldn't assist. Each member had highly reputable and quality pets to take on the responsibility of transporting goods. The pets moved at supersonic speed, swiftly loading boxes of candy onto their bodies. With all preparations complete the group immediately set off. These gifts were purchased with the huge profits gained from gourmet arena betting matches. Mansam used the money from the wealthy to support impoverished children worldwide. He also revealed the natural fish oil that Komatsu had found, highly praised by the culinary world. It seemed that he might soon enter the top 100 ranking of the world's top chefs. Rin was delighted to be traveling with Toriko. Terry was carrying them at a maximum speed of 350 km per hour. The destination was a country that had just experienced a civil war. At this moment, a mantis spider was preparing to attack a boy to make a tasty meal. However before it could harm the boy, Toriko quickly dealt with it using his exceptional knife skills. Toriko and Rin inquired about the boy's situation. Due to hunger the boy had to risk going outside to find food. Seeing the boy's plight Toriko decided to help him. In another location, Director Mansam and Komatsu were distributing gifts to the poor. For those who usually struggled to have a good meal, it was an extremely joyful occasion. Komatsu even fried chicken legs with the refined fish oil he found during the crystal fish hunting trip. He wanted the children to experience a fresh and lively atmosphere. 
On this side Sonny was also distributing gifts to the children. He even created a gigantic Christmas tree using hair, bringing smiles and happiness to the kids. Over here Coco was handing out gifts when he noticed a poor girl. He approached her, offering words of comfort and predicting a bright future for her. Coco assured her that his predictions would come true. In another location, Zebra was taking a stroll along the beach when a daring fish leaped onto the shore, attempting to feast on him. However Zebra quickly dealt with it and in no time, the fish was grilled and emanating a delicious aroma. It turned out that Zebra unintentionally eliminated a ferocious sea monster that often troubled the villagers providing a full meal for the local children. Meanwhile, Toriko had taken the unfortunate boy back home and provided food for his siblings. Afterwards, he continued distributing gifts to the children in the area, bringing not much, but enough to exchange for many smiles and tears of happiness. Snow had started to fall, and it was a rare type of snow with a unique flavor, known as flavor snow, which appeared once every few decades. Even in paradise, the joy of the blessed children with food was celebrated. Kamatsu, Koko, and Toriko all wore white suits, looking like sophisticated gentlemen as they were on their way to the world's largest casino. This place was beyond the reach of the law, attracting many pleasure seekers and underworld figures who desired to visit. The casino housed exotic and addictive ingredients, including high-quality ones that were difficult to obtain legally. These ingredients frequently circulated through illegal channels, and one of the targets of today's trip was the meteor garlic. This mysterious garlic was believed to grow in places where meteors rarely fell. Consuming it would provide enough energy for an entire month, making it an excellent ingredient for gourmet cells of gourmet hunters. It was the prize at the gourmet casino. This casino also served as the Kingdom of Jadar, where Coco had come to train. Despite being the world's largest casino, the people here lived in abject poverty. As Toriko descended, he was confronted by a few fake mafia thugs who attempted to threaten and rob him. Toriko, feigning fear, put on a cute expression that was ironically terrifying. When one of them fired a gunshot, Toriko effortlessly caught the bullet with two fingers and then unleashed his intimidating aura, causing the fake mafia members to hastily flee. The group proceeded to the city's marketplace, where even highly toxic ingredients like killer whale were being sold. An old lady approached Kamatsu, inviting him to buy some lucky stars. However, Toriko intervened, recognizing them as poisonous stars that caused addiction. He recounted an incident where these toxic stars appeared in a marketplace, resulting in the destruction of an entire city and millions of lives in that area. All the items on display seemed to range from mildly addictive to severely harmful, with nothing appearing to be healthy. Suddenly, they came across a stall selling mushroom sushi, and Toriko wanted to buy it as it could serve as a betting ingredient. Despite the outward appearance of poverty in the city, the central district was opulent, attracting the wealthy elite who came here to launder money. Any attempt at robbery here would likely result in death rather than imprisonment. Toriko, feeling indignant, extended his hand to help, as the rich were willing to gamble with the lives of others. Another thug tried to pick Kamatsu's pocket, but fortunately, Match intervened. Just by looking, Match deduced that they had come here for reward ingredients. He disclosed that the area was reserved for VIPs, and the gourmet Yakuza, led by his boss, managed it. With Match in charge now, many illegal and addictive ingredients were being transported to the city. Match came to investigate, suspecting that underground chefs were involved, and the mastermind behind it all was Livebearer. Match drew his sword and charged into the base of the underground chefs. Coco realized that trying to confront Livebearer head-on with Match's strength was futile, so their best option was to disrupt Livebearer's casino. Toriko, seeing Match's determination, convinced the group to join forces in dismantling the rigged casino run by Livebearer. Everyone quickly descended to observe the situation. Kamatsu strolled, admiring the magnificent scenery. Their every step was closely monitored by the casino's cameras. The prize for today was not addictive ingredients but rather premium ones that looked very delicious. Match believed that the addictive ingredients were likely in the VIP area, so everyone decided to go there. Toriko and Coco immediately went to withdraw money with the black gourmet card in hand. Toriko decided to go big, withdrawing 100 million gourmet dollars. The wealthy people withdrew money in such a distinctive manner, and the shiny coins were presented, indicating they were edible. Coco, being modest, took only one gold coin, but with that single coin, Coco planned to conquer the entire casino. Toriko tested his strength with the strength testing machine, resulting in a score of 666. He placed a bet of 1 million, and now he had won 6 million. Coco, with just one coin, had now won a heap of rare ingredients. Coco glanced at the camera, signaling everyone, and the group quickly dispersed to attract the casino's attention. On Match's side, he had won big. Toriko continued to play with the strength testing machine, playing so much that the staff eventually stopped him. Kamatsu was playing odd or even, and Toriko accidentally bumped into him, causing Kamatsu to drop a coin and win three coins. Toriko suggested finding another place with more significant stakes. The group gathered at the famous hundred-faced slot machine of the gourmet casino. 
The machine had 100 vertical and 100 horizontal faces with 60 different patterns, spinning at speeds ranging from 100 to 150 meters per second. Coco immediately inserted a coin into the machine, and the spinning speed was dazzling. Using his extraordinary eyes, Coco observed the machine's movement and continuously pressed the stop button for each row. Now the audience had filled the entire area. After three years, only Coco had solved the casino puzzle with just one coin. However, the casino staff noticed Coco's apparent ease in winning games in this area and decided to take them to a more enticing section. Another staff member went to a darkroom to inform their boss that Coco and Toriko were present. With just one coin, Coco won one trillion worth of valuable ingredients. Now, I understand why fortune tellers don't go gambling. If making money is as easy as this, who needs fortune telling? Coco mentioned that it wasn't luck but skill. The staff then took Coco to a more exciting section. As they stepped in, they expected to see dazzling lights. But what they saw was the reality of the underworld. A man had just been poisoned by devil poison apples. Most ingredients here were not only illegal but could also be deadly. The antics in this place treated others' lives as garbage. Money could indeed make people do anything here. The despicable individuals Komatsu encountered earlier in the lobby were now present as VIP customers. Those participating in life-threatening challenges were people who had not settled the debts they owed to the casino. Another person was playing a game with the chance of a durian bomb, every 10 bombs would kill the guy who ate it in less than 5 minutes. The staff member attempted to use psychological tactics, however Coco refused to play this game, and Match welcomed the challenge, urging everyone to bet on him. A giant figure appeared, expressing a desire for a more interesting wager, surpassing even the VIP area. This person was the owner of the casino and the underworld culinary world's boss, Live Bearer. The group followed Live Bearer, who referred to this place as the secret VIP area, accessible only to the most special VIP customers. The nobles in this area had their gourmet memories extracted. Coco was aware of this, here, they gambled memories of the food they had tasted in the past, known as gourmet memories. During his time in Jadar Kingdom, Coco had learned about these things. What he most wanted to find was a drink from complete menu of the holy acacia called Adam. Live Bearer believed that Coco might find some information within the memories of someone here. The elderly man was having his memories taken away, not just memories of food but also memories of his daughter's birthday. Live Bearer aimed to monopolize the most gourmet memories in people's minds. If memories were completely lost, the heart could stop beating, leading to the end of the game. After the conversation, both sides were ready to fight, but Toriko still wanted to play and bet his own memories to obtain the meteor garlic. Komatsu worried about losing the wonderful memories that both of them had worked so hard to create together. After the deal, Live Bearer led everyone down to a deep underground floor, welcoming them to what seemed like Squid Game, my mistake it was actually the gourmet arena. Both sides would play a culinary card drawing game. If a player drew two cards that didn't match, they would lose their turn. If they drew two cards with the same ingredient, they would get to eat. However, if the player couldn't finish the depicted dish on the card, all the points would go to their opponent. If a player drew 10 times without a match or failed to finish the food in two consecutive draws, they would be declared the loser. The boss also warned that in one set of culinary cards, there would be two prank cards, and the dishes depicted on those cards would be extremely difficult to eat. Due to suspicions of potential cheating, Match spoke up. However, the boss claimed to be a chef with the pride of a gambler and insisted he would never stoop so low. Before the game started, the team assigned roles. Coco, with his highly accurate precognition ability, was chosen as the card drawer, while Toriko was assigned the easy task of sitting still and enjoying the food without having to do anything. The boss revealed that he had played this game 214 times and had never lost, making Komatsu a bit nervous. Next, Match would flip a coin, with the boss choosing heads and Coco abstaining. Whoever guessed correctly would get the first chance to draw cards. Surprisingly, after the coin landed, it stood on its edge without falling on either side. Coco had correctly predicted this outcome and earned the right to draw the first card. He drew two cherry apple cards, each worth 10 points. The chef immediately brought a serving of cherry apples matching the images on the cards. Toriko simply sat back, watched, and enjoyed an easy 10 points. Coco continued by drawing two cards depicting shattered mushroom, worth 20 points. Komatsu used these ingredients to create a rich and creamy mushroom ice cream, inviting Toriko to savor it. After eating, the team had a total of 40 points and was currently leading against the boss. Now it's his turn to draw cards, and even the boss has to admit that Coco's foresight ability is formidable. He drew two sausage cards, each worth 50 points. With these ingredients, the boss prepared a dish called burning sausages. After eating, he also received 50 points. Next, he drew two mushroom cards, each worth 70 points. But don't be misled by high-scoring ingredients, as they are often challenging to cook and consume, requiring a chef of exceptional skill. In the final card draw, the boss revealed a 100-point egg fruit, bringing his total score to 220 points after three consecutive meals. 
The card drawing round shifted to Coco, and with a 180 point gap, Coco decided to make a bold move by drawing two high scoring cards, putting cards worth 150 points each. Immediately, a giant pudding appeared before everyone. Toriko had to consume the entire pudding within 150 minutes, or he would lose the match. Toriko started savoring the delicious and creamy layers of pudding. Concerned about Toriko consuming too many sweets and increasing his blood sugar, Komatsu prepared a sauce using garlic, nuts, and bananas to regulate the body's sugar absorption and aid digestion. In the end, Toriko finished the entire plate of pudding, bringing an additional 150 points to the team. Next, Coco drew two summer whiskey cards with an alcohol content of 83%, an extremely potent liquor. Despite its strength, Toriko, being the gourmet hunter, downed the entire bottle in one go. Following that, Komatsu prepared a plate of cheese cabbage to help Toriko recover from the effects of alcohol. In the final round, Coco drew two hazelnut bullet cards, each worth 70 points. These nuts fell rapidly like bullets, releasing a toxic substance upon impact. After finishing the plate of bullet nuts, the total score for the team reached 310 points, surpassing the boss by 90 points. It was at this moment that the boss realized Komatsu, besides the two heavenly kings, was no ordinary chef. Komatsu's brain intrigued the boss, and he was determined to acquire it. Coco observed and perhaps sensed something unusual about Livebearer. The real battle was only beginning. After three rounds, it would be Livebearer's turn, and what he drew was a stone rat worth 70 points. Although valuable, it wasn't easy to handle, with a level reaching 60. With just two strikes, Livebearer effortlessly captured and threw the stone rat with three horns into his cooking pot. After consuming it, he continued the game. In this round, he selected a poisonous lizard worth 150 points, a highly toxic ingredient. With two swift slashes, he easily killed the creature, then undertook the challenging task of cooking and consuming it. For his final draw, Livebearer struck big, garlic crab worth 200 points. This Livebearer guy played this game in a mysterious and deceptive way. Match still couldn't figure out the trick he was using. In three rounds, Livebearer earned an additional 420 points, bringing his total to 640 points. Komatsu admired his talent. Despite winning high-scoring ingredients, Livebearer could effortlessly cook challenging materials. However, what no one knew was that Livebearer's cooking techniques were extracted from the memories of many chefs who lost here. Coco remained calm like still water and deliberately chose two cards that didn't match, forfeiting his turn and passing it to Livebearer. After consulting with ChatGPT, Coco's strategy to win this card drawing game was deduced as avoiding drawing large losing cards during the game and forfeiting strategically. Livebearer believed that even if his trick was exposed, winning against him was impossible. However, whether this anime character's name was Livebearer or not, viewers were already aware of the outcome. During Livebearer's turn, he effortlessly accumulated high points with winning cards, and his total score reached 930 points, far exceeding Toriko's team. It was Coco's turn and he once again made the wrong choice, causing Komatsu and Toriko to panic amidst the crowd. The turn was again transferred to Livebearer. Continuously drawing high-scoring cards, he now raised his total points to 1190, surpassing Toriko's team by 880 points. At this point, Coco stated that the most challenging opportunity was also the only chance for the entire group to reverse this one-way game. This time, Coco made the right choice with the Emperor Crab. Toriko entered the fray, using his flying fork technique flawlessly and then passing the cooking task to Komatsu. The Emperor Crab and spicy chili sauce emerged from the oven, presenting a perfect appearance. Toriko folded his hands in prayer, expressing gratitude for the meal. As they say, with great power comes great responsibility. In any vulnerability the team placed their trust. Coco flipped his card, revealing the highly toxic devil's poison potato. An ingredient that not even Setsuno had notes on how to remove its toxicity. It was considered 20 times more toxic than the puffer whalefish and could only be consumed and cooked within 10 minutes, with a mere 10 points. Finding it extremely challenging to eat, Coco skipped his turn, passing it to Livebearer. He drew a furious bear card, a fierce creature with a level of 80, but its value was 250 points, corresponding to its worth. Livebearer quickly drew another card, the cheese insult, a substance emitting such a foul odor that it couldn't be processed. Due to the significant point difference, he chose this to avoid the hassle of dealing with an level 80 monster. In Coco's turn, he drew a sea urchin mouse and a snake centipede, both with capture levels above 50, but their points were only 10. Coco made the wrong choice in trying to eliminate these two tricky cards. In this tense moment, the Toriko team could potentially turn the tide of this game. Due to the point difference, Livebearer discarded all the challenging dishes and confidently waited for Coco's mistake. Coco trusted Toriko and decided to reveal the Furious Bear card to show Livebearer why this anime was named Toriko. Simultaneously as Toriko engaged in the battle, Coco had a private conversation with Komatsu. Allow me to provide more information about this gourmet casino for you to understand. Beasts with capture levels above 60 at the gourmet casino were kept in a special underground vault. 
almost all the guests who went there never returned. If they could consume these tricky playing cards, they could exchange one card with Lightbearer, creating a dramatic turnaround for the entire group. Toriko took the battle seriously and directly attacked the Furious Bear. He swiftly avoided its attacks, but it was not an easy task. The Furious Bear charged fiercely and launched a relentless assault on Toriko, who then disappeared from sight after a series of punches. A ferocious beast, Coco explained that the Furious Bear was the number one ruthless omnivore, capable of clearing an entire ecosystem of living creatures on a mountain in just half a day. Toriko concentrating his strength and unleashed the 18-hit nail punch. He charged forward to deliver a straight punch to this Furious Bear. Kamatsu was delighted, but that wasn't enough to defeat this beast. Toriko had to strip off his shirt, revealing his truly powerful muscles. The furious bear charged and punched at Toriko, who, now much more agile, managed to evade all attacks. Koko referred to Toriko's skill as intuition, fighting without thinking, relying on previous combat experience. Toriko unleashed his sharpness, delivering 36 consecutive nail punches, then continued to punch the stomach of the enraged bear. This time, it truly fell. Now it was Kamatsu's turn. Koko had previously whispered to Kamatsu, trusting in his abilities. Observing Toriko's endurance reaching its limit due to excessive use of techniques draining his stamina. Kamatsu cooked the bear, placing the steamed meat on vegetables and wrapping them in large paper. He brought it out, adding soy sauce and sauce for Toriko to enjoy. Before Kamatsu finished explaining, Toriko had already finished eating. Koko used the advantage of winning the tricky card and took the crab garlic card for himself, then handed the summer whiskey card to Lightbearer. This decision puzzled Lightbearer because whiskey was a high-scoring card. Kamatsu continued to prepare the crab garlic in sashimi form, Toriko quickly finished it before Koko even finished his explanation. Lightbearer analyzed the remaining cards and understood Koko's plan. He thought the chance of success was nearly zero, but let me remind you that the anime name is Toriko, Mr. Lightbearer. Now Lightbearer had to drink the summer whiskey, an addictive ingredient that Toriko had consumed earlier. Lightbearer shared that this was his favorite drink. After that, he ate cheese cabbage like Kamatsu did for Toriko. Koko quickly chose to forfeit his turn, allowing Toriko to rest. Lightbearer realized this, so he also skipped drawing cards, not giving Toriko any rest time. However, these were Koko's cunning calculations all along. The next two cards chosen by Koko were the Firecracker Dragonfly and the Cheese Insult, both with only 10 points. Koko asked Toriko and Kamatsu to do their best for this stage. Next was the Cheese Insult with only 10 points. This was a high-risk ingredient, but Kamatsu found a unique way to prepare it, placing it on a crisp biscuit and adding a little apricot jam to make it more palatable. Though it had a slightly strong smell, Toriko easily ate it. With Kamatsu's culinary skills continuing the winning streak, the last card Koko prepared was the Bomb Cherry, a tricky ingredient with only 10 points and challenging to process. This was the only way the team could turn the game around. Kamatsu, with a tense and careful face, precisely inserted the Bomb Cherry into a 6 degrees Celsius environment, the ideal temperature for the Bomb Cherry. He maintained the temperature, separating the layers through delicate adjustments and avoiding any small collisions. Kamatsu was meticulous and careful, feeling nervous about this cherry. Toriko, realizing this, approached and simply put the bomb cherry into his mouth, and it began to explode inside him, creating a loud sound that even I could feel. Toriko believed there was no winning or losing with ingredients, everything was a gift from nature. After standing up confidently, he affirmed that all the ingredients he had eaten were delicious. Koko noticed that the bomb cherry had likely caused severe damage to Toriko's internal organs, but now the gourmet cells in his body were beginning to regenerate those damaged organs at full capacity. The light bearer's face twisted in a perverted delight, seeing Kamatsu dripping with saliva due to the memories of his cooking. Koko exchanged a lightning lemon for light bearer, giving him furious bear instead of a 10-point card. Match realized the potential for victory lay in making light bearer give up in this round so that the team could receive all the points. However, Lightbearer also caught onto this plan and ignored the bear, believing he had read Koko's intentions and avoided being psychologically manipulated. Kamatsu prepared a lightning lemon with a special sauce made from dragon honey, creating a lemon piece with an electric potential of 10,000 volts when eaten. Despite the challenging nature of the dish, Toriko flawlessly consumed it, stating that if a delicious dish was in front of him, he would be ready to eat it without hesitation. Koko's score was now 1290, turning the situation around in a blink. All three rounds had passed, and now it was Lightbearer's turn again. He revealed an electric banana, an addictive ingredient worth 180 points. Lightbearer grinned maliciously, revealing that he cooked the banana in sugar syrup to completely eliminate the addictive substance. Now he easily consumed it and claimed the 180 points. Lightbearer was delighted because, even if everyone finished the remaining ingredients, Coco's team still couldn't surpass his score. He generously invited everyone to finish the remaining ingredients. Coco thanked Lightbearer for doing exactly as he predicted. Toriko and Kamatsu easily consumed all the remaining challenging ingredients, and Toriko's body had fully recovered. On the table remained only one last ingredient, the deadly poisonous potato card, the worst card in the game. Lightbearer asserted that there was no ingredient he couldn't eat in process, even the monstrous beasts that he could easily kill. 
Therefore, there was no chance for Toriko's team. Coco already knew all of this because those who were fraudulent were easy to spot. He knew that Lightbearer would never include ingredients he couldn't eat in this game. Coco concluded with the statement that this would be the last thing Lightbearer would ever eat in his life, the chain of the worst foods for the poisonous potato, leaving Lightbearer shocked and sweating, realizing he had fallen into Coco's carefully crafted scenario. Komatsu further explained that when consuming multiple dishes simultaneously, it could be either beneficial or detrimental, citing an example that eating watermelon and drinking beer together might have a diuretic effect that is not good for the body. However, pairing liver and garlic enhances the absorption of vitamin B in the liver, which is excellent for health recovery. Koko continued Komatsu's story, explaining that potatoes contain a harmful substance called solanine found in the plant sprouts. However, the toxic potatoes contains a new toxic element called neosolanine, which is about 40,000 times more toxic than solanine. Completely removing neosolanine is impossible. Nevertheless, depending on how the food is combined, the toxicity can return to its original nature. Indeed, sir toxic along with predictive abilities, the scenarios Coco prepared all unfolded as predicted. Everything in the food chain that Lightbearer was psychologically manipulated by Coco had been planned by him after Lightbearer ate the golden shrimp. All of this was orchestrated thanks to Coco's intuition and Lightbearer's arrogance. These elements made it easy for Coco to manipulate Lightbearer psychologically, and the bomb cherry card was what Coco bet on for Toriko. In return, it caused trouble in Toriko's food chain before eating that dish. Coco strategically planned for Toriko's recovery by having him consume the meat of the furious bear. This was why Komatsu preserved the meat, not wanting to lose the essential nutrients like vitamin B1. The combination of vitamin B1 with allicin in the garlic when Toriko consumed it expedited the recovery process. Furthermore, Toriko consumed the firecracker dragonfly meat just before the bomb cherry, neutralizing the explosive ingredients. Lastly, the disgusting smell of the cheese insult served to protect Toriko's nose from inhaling toxic fumes from the explosion. That was also why Komatsu didn't completely remove the explosive core of the cherry but processed it to maximize its taste, and the lightning lemon afterward stimulated a strong heartbeat, aiding in the recovery process. Match is impressed by the perfect script that Coco has written. Indeed, there is always someone stronger. While the whole group explains their script, Lightbearer quickly enhances his body to eliminate any sensations of pain in his brain. Additionally, he has a layer of biodegradable plastic covering his internal organs, ensuring that toxins cannot permeate his body. He proudly declares himself the lord of the gourmet underworld, confident that he cannot be defeated. Coco closes his eyes and adds a final note when drinking the summer whiskey and suitable vegetable is the cheese cabbage, which contains a large amount of bacteria capable of breaking down alcohol and biodegradable plastic. He drops this information casually, surprising Lightbearer, who didn't anticipate that Coco would consider the fact that he covered his internal organs with biodegradable plastic to avoid toxins. Lightbearer, unwilling to accept defeat, urges his subordinates to the match. Of course, Coco had planned for this from the beginning. Coco, not just a fortune teller but a powerful gourmet hunter, offers to take on this crazy chef himself. He effortlessly defeats Lightbearer using his toxic armor, and Komatsu takes the opportunity to finish preparing the toxic potato and lizard ingredients, the sea hedgehog, and the snake scorpion. They are the ingredients calculated by Coco to assist in the consumption of this final dish. Toriko, after consuming the poisonous potatoes, as expected by Coco, saw the gourmet cells of Toriko evolve after neutralizing the toxin. Toriko proudly declared that Kamasu was his true teammate, making Lightbearer hear it. Finally, the whole group together descended into the casino to search for the meteor garlic, with guidance from Lightbearer. Lightbearer wondered why they didn't use all the data in his head. Toriko explained that doing so would be no different from Lightbearer because food is not sensed through thoughts but through the mouth. During the investigation, Match and his Yakuza comrades found the meteor garlic that Toriko needed. Upon arriving at the location of the meteor garlic, Lightbearer mentioned that it is also a special ingredient and questioned if Komatsu could process it. Komatsu, with a confident face, stated that he would try his best to process it. Koko and Toriko went to the top floor to admire the cityscape, leaving Komatsu with Lightbearer in the kitchen. Under the kitchen, Komatsu struggled to peel the meteor garlic, and Lightbearer thought that this special ingredient would be too much for Komatsu. Just as he thought so, he looked back and saw Komatsu finding a way to peel it without any hints. In a moment, Komatsu completely peeled the garlic, then asked Lightbearer about the cheese bacillus. He believed that the bacteria in the cheese cabbage could peel off the tough shell. Coco's knocking was now ineffective, and Lightbearer quickly approached Komatsu. However, instead of causing harm, he sincerely guided Komatsu in the right direction. Perhaps seeing Komatsu's passionate dedication reminded Lightbearer of his own past. This is also true in Coco's prediction. Restraining Lightbearer for a short time is also because he believes that with Komatsu's love for cooking, they can wash away the wickedness in Lightbearer's heart. Placing this garlic on the table immediately exploded, shooting light across the beautiful sky, illuminating the entire city. Everyone praised and enjoyed the exploding garlic, and the edible part was the core of this garlic.
The delicious piece of garlic split into five pieces, and everyone thanked Lightbearer, inviting him to join the table because with him, the whole group could eat, and the more people, the merrier. As each person took a bite, Komatsu and Matcha's muscles swelled up, resembling bodybuilders, while Koko seemed like a giant. Perhaps this is the dish that matches his gourmet cells, and this time Lightbearer will be the chef, a genuine chef. Toriko also began to eat, feeling the meteor garlic tearing through his clothes and muscles, with his body developing just as impressively. Lightbearer handed back the casino management to Match and gave him full authority to remove any illegal ingredients. Everyone thanked each other for the delicious meal. The Toriko anime concludes here. If you enjoyed it, please subscribe, like, and share to motivate the channel to create the next part. Thank you.